Hey, what's up guys, this is Val. In this video, I'm gonna cover the basics of IRA render settings, and specifically the built-in render settings. Now, they can be found here, render, render settings, and I have already this, this window docked over here, so this is how it looks like. And one very useful feature, if you ever get stuck or, you know, produce some unwanted results, you can always click on defaults. That will just immediately bounce back to this kind of default state. And first thing, you know, I, I cover this in the camera video, but I just wanted to quickly mention this, that when the camera is selected, head over to parameters tab and headlamp and make sure it's turned off so that it doesn't project any lighting into the scene. All right, so first of all, we've got here the editor, sub-tab kind of, right? We've got presets, editor, and advanced. Advanced is where you set your graphic card if you want to use CPU or not. I do not want to use that because that usually, you know, uh, puts pressure on my system when I'm rendering something. And when I want to go into Photoshop or some other document, I don't want to, you know, put, uh, put any pressure or strain on the CPU. So I disable that actually. Um, under that, I usually, you know, uh, click this OptiX Prime Acceleration, which enhances the rendering speed. Now back to the editor here. Obviously, we've got the general tab when you have all the, you know, kind of default settings like width and height of your render. And what you have at the very top is your dimensions preset. And here you can click on different presets. One of the most common I use is wide, uh, which is 69. Uh, while constraint proportions global here is on, if you change the width of your render, so will the height automatically. All right. Now, if you disable this, you can then fine tune that to a different value if that's what you want. You can then go back to turn on to constrain, and then once you change this, this other value here would auto follow. Okay, so I'm gonna select 69 for now. Now, I'm not gonna cover this in depth right now, but just render still image current frame is the one you wanna do. Render mode, always photo real. Progressive rendering, let's keep it simple. I always use render quality one, two, 300. Depends on you know the render, uh, the, the scene, and the darker the scene is, you can take a look at the scene, you can maybe notice a little bit, especially if I move the camera, is that it very quickly looks good where there is light and the shadow areas kind of follow. And that's true for rendering as well. Uh, where there is sufficient light, you get a lot less noise and can therefore render uh, quicker for better results. And when there is shade or darkness or bouncing light, well, light, you know, light bounce, enters through a window, bounces off walls, and becomes indirect lighting, that takes a little bit longer to, to render. All right, so remember this. The higher the quality here, the longer the render will take. Usually, if you increase this to double the size, you will almost double the render time, uh, but also get better quality. Okay, so there are two, remember to have this on so that you can control the render quality. If you turn it off, it will not be available to, for you to choose. Um, so there's two things that determine how long it takes for Arrow to finish a render. One is the max samples. I usually run to 15,000, which is the max. And also here is maximum time. Whether this is reached first or this, um, I will stop rendering and call it done. Three, uh, 7,200 seconds, I believe that's two hours. Let me just double check. Divided by 60, 120 minutes, which is two hours, okay. So if you, after two hours, still are not getting the results you want, you can increase the rendering time. Uh, with my graphic card, this GTX 1080, I seldom let it render for more than half an hour. Tops one hour if I really want good quality, but most of my renders take a few seconds or minutes uh, to finish. 
Now, that is all you need to know here, all right? Now, alpha, I don't use. Optimization, I don't use. Filtering, I use at times. And what's useful here is the bloom filter enable. Uh, what it does, it creates a bloom effect, kind of like a glowing effect on top of the lighting and all that. And the settings you want to go after, kind of to avoid this phenomenon happening right now, is 0 0.3, 10,000, and 0 0.3. That, in most cases, looks pretty decent. You can then adjust up and down for how bright you want this effect to be, and also the radius of it, if you want it to bleed, so, so to speak, more into your scene, or if you want it to be more delicate, and also adjust the intensity to suit. So that depends on how many you know, lights you have, how it looks like, uh, whether you have strong hotspots or not, and how lighting is positioned. So this, these values may change, um, depending on which render you're doing. But my default value is 0 0.3, 10,000, 0 0.3. There we go. Spectrum rendering, never use that. Tone mapping is very cool. That gives you the ability to control a few factors. I seldom use all of these, but some of them include film ISL, which is the kind of overall intensity at which array reads everything so if you increase this you get more exposure more bright overall this is this accounts for everything in your scene every single light every built-in light every non-built-in light hdr maps everything across the board so it's kind of like a master slider and also you can go backwards to uh, get a more dampened effect if you will if you want right let me turn off that blue so we see more of what's going on here. All right, let's go back to 100. Another useful thing is vignetting. That puts a kind of border, soft border around your you know, uh, render. And how much you can do or get away with here depends on whether you have uh, the camera zoomed out. You can see the effect becomes more dominant right now. Or if you zoom in, the effect becomes lesser visible. Uh, less visible so you need to increase this value to get it to show up another thing i use uh, is um here white point if you want a little bit warmer tint in your render go for blue tones if you want a little bit colder then go for warmer tones that's it don't need to mention any more about that it's quite the opposite of your of what you set it to burn highlights means that you are pushing the bright stuff as you can see it really pushes the white stuff right never use it uh, let's see default values i think 0 0.2 can't remember now which, which let me just undo a few times there we go all right crush blacks is pretty cool kind of like contrast increase it, it makes the it doesn't kind of well it increases the black tones a little bit but also it's kind of like a contrast semi-contrast thing so if you want you're running to really punch a little bit more you can do that saturation obviously is color full has a little bit of color black and white runners black and white and gamma is gamma no need to explain that all right that's it all right so the most important tab is the environment of time. Here is where most of the magic will happen. And here is some some things to consider. Um, dome, the settings I use is either dome and scene, dome only, or scene only. Scene only means you're only using the lights that are built in here, like point and spotlight, right? Only renders those, nothing else. Dome only means that we are suddenly using if you have no image applied here, if you have one, click none, all right? If you have no image applied, then IRA uses the built-in um, kind of global lighting solution with its uh, uh, latitude, longitude thing, which I never use, the date, which I never use. I just set it to some summer date and time at 6, uh, 6 p.m., and that's okay. And thing is, as you see, you know, 
if you consider you know uh, sunlight in reality right if if uh, the sun sets goes down it also orbits around you or your scene or yourself or your house or whatever you're looking at from right so if i move this you can see that it gets longer shadows all right but also it turns around as opposed to if I go to maybe 14, it's almost from the front, right? And as I move the time downwards, not only do I get the sun lower and lower for longer shadows, but also it rotates around the cube, which is what the sun does, right? There is no way to avoid that. If you want to adjust the length of the shadow and the angle, this is what you need to do. Once you get the proper length of your shadow, what you do is go back to dome rotation and override the rotation to um, suit your scene. What you also can do, not many people know this, you can skew the dome on the X axis to also kind of, you know, adjust the uh, angle a little bit, although it's not perfect and it kind of orbits a little bit around. Very important, draw dome on and off on obviously projects the sky in your render and, and the ground is visible down here and uh, ground is kind of you know if you turn it off it's still visible it's not that kind of ground the ground is if you take away the plane now the cube ain't casting any shadow turn on the ground on and you will cast shadow all right, and this particular ground will only catch shadows from the dome, not from your scene lights. All right, and dome and scene means you're using this particular setup, the one we're using here, and the built in lights. All right, so whatever you want to use here. And basically, this is it. Um, there are a few more settings, let me cover those. So let me bring back the plane. And so remember, you have this master slider, which is the ISO. I right? can always bring it down if the statue, if, if it's a little bit too much in your scene, right? Now, let me show you one more thing, and it has to do with the sun disk intensity. Uh, this intensity is a master slider of everything, all lights in your scene. This over here, environment intensity, controls the sky and sun, so the dome, right? And increasing that, you know, projects more light from the sky and the sun at the same time. However, you can do manually adjust the sun intensity by going here, sun disk intensity. This controls only the sun, so you can pretty much turn off the sun and still get the sky component visible in your render, all right? What you also can do, you can scale the sun disk. The larger it is, the softer the shadow. So if you increase it really big, you get a really nice soft shadow. So if you want a softer shadows, this is the way to go. If you want a little bit harder shadows, you go back and create crisp shadows for being the default. Now glow intensity has to do with if you look in the sky you can see the sky over here right and depending on how much you let it glow it starts to I went negative there it starts to kind of glow in the sky it doesn't change how it looks like on the ground though so it's just a sky thingy all right. Um, some of the things you can turn the entire render, you know, um, blue, blue tinted or red. Never use this, but it's useful for quick adjustments here a little bit. And horizon blur can be, you know, something you can use uh, if this maybe you have a window in your scene and you see this ugly ground, right? So what you can do with that, you can blur it, all right. You can also shift it upwards or downwards so that you never see it really. It affects your lighting a little bit, but uh, it's it's not, you know, it's something you can modify if it gets in your way. Another thing you can do is obviously change the ground color. 
you know if you want to maybe have some green instead of the gray you can do that and that is pretty much it you can control the intensity of the shadow the more intense the darker the shadow but as you can see it doesn't change the shadow on our plane right here because it's not that kind of shadow it's the shadow you get when you turn on the plane and get the shadow on to the ground all right let me show you that now it gets really really dark and intense very intense right so this is the shadow to control that's that slider not the shadow on the plane on the plane that's a different shadow all right so one cool thing is the ground position mode position mode which is auto by default it has to do with not this particular plane but this plane over here this one where we don't see uh, when we don't have any physical plane added it's that iry kind of default ground that is the one here um, when it's set to auto it means that it automatically tracks and finds the lowest point in your scene so if I move my cube down now the ground follows all right see the cube is minus 42 almost 43 and still the ground is exactly what the cube is now if you set it to manual mode and if you have you know very several items it will pick the one that has the lowest height uh, for setting the ground now if you have manual mode and you get here ground origin y at zero then move the cube down it will sink into the ground in the same fashion you can alter the ground height by altering this thing here while the cube is being uh, still all right that is pretty much it my friend i don't want to complicate things as of now that was kind of like a quick intro to the um iray the iray you know render engine and obviously if you want to render with hdr maps you can add them here just browse and add them this is this one here is kind of the default map that follows along with the studio which is a nice one all right nice overall cool soft lighting and if you want to use the built-in solution click none that automatically switches to the 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 latitude longitude time day and so forth mode that's pretty much it my friend thanks so much for watching see you next video